Well, hello and uh, welcome back to the grind. Still on on the 924 Porsche. Now this week, the uh, last week was all about this WUR. Now, during the middle of this week's uh, adventure, I did do a little bit more work on that and sorted it out to my satisfaction. I haven't as yet got it running to, you know, just for the last check, but that will happen, you know, next week. Because the rest of the week was spent, well, look at this. You can put your hands down here now because the motor mounts are back into it. New motor mounts. And this one, this side here, wasn't even hooked on. It was just hanging around. So the motor was pushing against this stuff and not in the right spot at all. It looks an awful lot better now with it in the right spot. So that was, I, I did that. What else did I do? And then I wanted to get the gear shift linkage. I was... <laughs> got to be so bad that I could only like if you look inside there maybe I can open the door here there's no gear shift aye, aye, aye. so it was so bad that I could only get the gears that pushed forward so I could get reverse and I could get second and I could get fourth so because it goes uh, reverse up first down second that way third that way fourth that way fifth that way that's the way the gears work on it and that I found out is because it's a type what they call a type Z transmission which is right there I did finally get it out what a journey that was getting it out and uh, somebody else was here before me and actually made some modifications to the car which you'll see as it goes along and without those modifications I don't think it's possible to get this out and it's possible to get it out but I don't know if it's possible to get it back in Anyhow, the modifications are there, and I'll and I'll deal with them later. So this is out, and then I was able to go and uh, with the uh, 3D printer, I was able to make new bushings for this right here. And this is that's the major thing for the uh, gear shift. It turns back and forth this way and that way, and it was all loose. Plus the other pole, this pole here, was off of its. Like I think there's a screw goes on top of that. Anyhow, so that's all for this week, and uh, hope you enjoy it. The come and uh, stick around. You'll see everything I did. Next week I'll get to putting it back up into the car. I hope and uh, see how that goes. Okay, see you then. Yeah, yeah. Welcome, welcome back to the grind. Once again, here I am with the 924, Porsche 1924 or 1979 in the shop. Now, last time I was on this K Jetronics thing, and I've had enough of that for now. It's always, I'll always journey back to it. That's the warm up regulator there, which I've moved, moved this from the back of the motor to here because it's just easier to access that way. Anyhow, now, Underneath here, I've got new motor mounts, and I'm going to put them on. Oh, that's my alarm for... There. I've got a new motor mounts. I'm going to put them on it, and uh, I've also got a gear shift thing here, whether I get to this on this video or not. This is the uh, linkage thing, but I think I have to actually drop the rear end or transmission right out of it to get to it. On this car, it's got a... It's a... Z type of uh, transmission, 5 speed Z type, and that is a bit different than everything else you see. Anyway, I'll uh, get at it here. First thing's motor mounts. Now, the reason I'm thinking of motor mounts is because this is like there's no room in between there. And I've watched other videos online, and it seems that people can reach their spark plugs, and I, like, I can't. So I'm going to just see if I can see if the motor mounts are just worn right down and that might help things out because it doesn't look quite right there hey eh? anyway we'll uh see what happens yeah yeah so no wonder the motor's hanging so far over on this side the motor mount's not even hooked on to anything like that i don't know can you see right here is the motor mount and it's supposed to go down through this thing here and bolt on but there's nothing nothing holding it so it's just hanging up there with nothing on it huh no wonder now a matter of getting the 
getting that put together. I wonder if I can get this heat shield off of here somehow or other. See if I can get I got the heat shield off back here, which is this bit here. That comes off just three or four screws. Hold that on. Now I wonder if I can get the heat shield off of here. And then uh, I'll be able to access that a little bit better. Now the other side is at least bolted on up there. Isn't that something, hey? No wonder it's hanging away over in this side. It's not even on a motor mount. My oh my oh my. Maybe that'll help if I get the motor mount on. It might help the gear shift a little bit too, eh? Hmm, you never know. Okay, well I'll see if I can get this heat shield here off of it. And uh, this one out of the way. Then I'll have some access up there. Most of the screws are missing, I think. Hmm, as usual. Don't know what's holding it at the top. I can see a bolt there. A nut holding it up there. Oh, oh boy, oh boy. Do I have to drop the... The easiest thing might be to just drop the, the uh, exhaust pipe out of the way. I think maybe I'll do that. Now, surprisingly enough, all the nuts on the uh, exhaust manifold up there. Can you see them? Where am I looking? Right up there. Where do I change the light? Right there. There's two there. There's two there and one at the front. Now the one at the front, if you can see that, yeah, the one at the front, it was tough to get off. I had to put heat to that, but the other one's just, I put a bit of penetrating oil and they cracked off. Now, this piece here, same thing, penetrating oil, and it came out of the way. And then I can just shift that enough to get at the nut on that one there. Boy, oh boy, isn't that something? Anyway, we'll just see where we go from now. Like, I could take, I haven't had it apart there, but I have had it apart here. And uh, if I take it apart here, that that's easy. So I'll just you know, strap it up somehow or other. There's supposed to be a motor amount here for it. And that's into, I have to take this off if I'm going to get to the uh, transmission anyhow. So maybe I'll just take the whole exhaust system off. Right, oops, did you hear that? I think they heard that in Charlottetown again. That should slip out, of, like I'll just take these two nuts off and that'll slip off that holder there. Maybe. Hmm. Anyhow. First off, I'll take the front half off, and then we'll worry about the back half later. Yeah, there we go. The muffler, or the exhaust pipe is out. That's the catalytic converter there. And then, I've got the new ones there, so I kind of know what they sort of look like. And then down here... I don't know. Can you see down there? Down in there... Uh, you can sort of see. There's two bolts coming up and those are the top bolts for the motor mount so if I get them out they're 17s if I get them out then that motor mount will drop right out of there and I should be able to slide the new one in and then jack the motor up to the right height because it's hanging over on this side just just hmm just hmm yeah what do you say about that eh I'll see if I can get those bolts out of there yeah so I got the two nuts off of there wait a minute down in there, down, way down there. And hopefully I can get that motor mount jiggled out of there. Hmm, we'll see what happens next. Gotta go down below for that. Yeah, now I've got this shield out of the way here finally. And see if I can get this motor mount out of here now. Somehow, jiggled it out. I think it might be a two-handed operation. I'll just see if I can get it out of here. Won't, won't go quite clear of that, eh? Okay, two-handed operation. I'll see if I can get it out of there. Yeah, so there likely wasn't much wrong with that motor mount. It's spring-loaded in there. And this one here is a solid fit. So let's see how we can get this back in there. Hmm. 
Might have to take it apart to get it in there. We'll just see. I'll give it a go. Was it pointing the right way? Let's see if I can get it in there. Anyway, one out. Whoops, where am I? Get a light here. So I've got the two, you see the two new bolts down there? Those are the top bolts. Now I'll get down underneath and I'll tighten up the bottom one. Then I'll see if I can change the other side. It is. It's not very easy, but I guess it's doable. Yeah, now we're on the other side here. And everything, like everything is tight in here, right? So, I don't know, can you see them down there? There's two. I don't think you're looking at them. Like, maybe from here. There, you can see one down there, anyhow. Maybe, maybe not. Hmm. Anyway, take my word. Right down there. Right down at the end of my light there. Can you see the end of the light? Anyway, there's two bolts for the top of the uh, motor mount. Yeah, so I got one of the nuts off from this side. Maybe I can get the other one off from down below. I'm not sure. I'll give it a try. There, down in there. And I got the other nut off the top here. Now, it's all a matter of holding your tongue right and uh, everything like that to get it off of there. So it's, I'll see now if I can get the brat, the whatever you call that thing. What is it? What am I working on there? The uh, motor mount out now without too much more trouble. Hmm, we'll see. Yeah, so here's the other motor mount. Now, this one here is likely still serviceable. Mind you, it's been holding the whole thing up for ever, right? I don't know how long this one here has been off. Who knows, eh? Anyway, I'll uh, see about getting the second motor mount this one up into this place and uh, go from there yeah this one goes right here everything is so tight in here eh? everything very very tight I'll see if I can get it up in there I've just got the motor down resting on the uh, I think it's resting on whatever it rests on here as far down as I can get it and then I've got the jack here so I can lift it up again. So I'll see you about getting this on there. Yeah, I have success. I've got that motor mount up in there. And I've got the two nuts on the top. So just a matter of I'll go up and tighten them up. This one here I've just got screwed on loose down here so it doesn't fall out. And uh, then when I want to tighten this one down, I'll put the jack underneath it and jack up the motor a bit. And see how that works out. Anyway, yay. I think I can get it finished now. You gotta hold your nose right and everything like that. And finally it goes on. Now my socket is still down there. I don't know if you can see that down there. Let me just change this light around. Yeah, you can see the one new bolt there maybe. And the other one somewhere behind it. With the socket on it. Somewhere down there. Anyway, two top bolts are on and tight. And I'll go underneath and see if I can get the uh, bottom one to tighten up right. Yeah, so I just put my jack down here and I've supported it with a up there so this can come off now safely. And I can get all the paraphernalia onto there. Okay, am I pointing the right way? Yeah, okay, over here. I got the nut in my hand. Now I've got to find all the paraphernalia that goes on there. Oh, there it is. Yeah, so I'm putting these heat shields back on where they're supposed to go. And see the wire for the battery I've got coming back through here so that it doesn't get involved with all the heat from the exhaust system. Uh, while I'm here, I should just tie it to something to so keep it, I don't know where to tie it to, like, what would you do, hey? Eh? What would be the best thing to do there? Seems to be all right routed through there. Is that a tie-off point right there for it? 
I bet it is. I'll just tie it to that. Okay, that'll be good. And then I'll put this up. And then meanwhile, I've got the inspection plate off here. That's the clutch plate there. And the wear limit on it is 8.5 millimeters. And this one's around 9 or 9.3 millimeters. So it's still got some life in it. We'll, we'll, won't worry about it yet. Now there, that heat shield's back up in the way, in the right spot, and it actually has all the bolts in it now. There was no bolt here before, and there was no bolt right here before. So I put them all in, and then I found that clamp for the uh, hot wire, the hot wire on the battery to the starter, so that it's not going to get interfered with again. And hmm. Then this little thing here, it's a, some sort of little shock absorber thing that was hanging loose. It's got a nut and bolt in here that holds it onto the onto the uh, wait, the subframe here. And so I put it back on. I don't know what it's for, but that's what it is. I think it's a little shock absorber to stop shaking, eh? Stop it from shaking so much. Who knows? A little bit of a leak by the oil gasket there. I can see the gasket coming out. Maybe I'll get a new filter for it soon because I've had that filter off a couple of times just to get stuff done and when you take them off and put them back on it's never really not a great thing to do. Okay I think that's it for today. I'm dirty enough now so I'll let it down and uh, I'll let it down and I'll see how level the motor looks. See how the motor looks. I'm curious now. Well, now that makes a big difference of where the motor sits. It's like you can get your hand down in here now. It used to be right, it used to be just, well, you could see it was rubbing on that and pushing against there. So it was a half an inch out. Likely that was holding it up. <laughs> Who knows? Anyway, that's much, much better to have the motor mounts in properly and it looks decent now. That makes a big difference. Maybe things will get better. Hey, they can only get better. Anyhow, I have the mufflers off and the exhaust system off and I have to get some uh, exhaust system goopy goop stuff to put those. Like the, the uh, fortunately, this um, gasket here is in pretty nice, pretty nice shape. So I'll use it again, but I'll put some of that uh, copper, you know, exhaust gasket stuff on. And the same with this other gasket that goes behind the behind the catalytic converter. It's in pretty good shape. And this was, uh, I cobbled this one together. I had to make those holes bigger so to be able to fit that on. Because uh, one of those things that's unobtainium, hey? So you just find something that's close and make it work. Anyway, like I said, that's enough for today. I'll see, uh, see you tomorrow, perhaps. Bye for now. Yeah, here I am, yeah, back again at the uh, 924 Porsche, way up there. Now, what am I going to do today? I've got to put the exhaust system back on. This thing here, see if I can get that linked up properly. And uh, the exhaust, I'm going to put, I went to town and I got some of that goopy goop stuff to do the, whatever you call this stuff. Where is it? Not that, this stuff. Ultra copper gasket maker for exhaust. So the, um, just to make this seal properly. And then I'll also put some anti-seize stuff on the nuts that go on there, whether it helps or not, who knows. Anyway, but they were all, they all came off except one was kind of tough to get off. So I'd like that not to happen again if I can help it. This end here, I'm not going to put anything on here, just put the gasket on here for now because I'll have to take that, I think I have to take the transmission out of it to get to the linkage thing up there because I just can't, like everybody else on the planet seems to be able to reach it without taking it apart, but I don't see where it is. Anyhow, sorry there wasn't much light there, was there? Let me get the light back there if I can. Whoops. Oh, not much chance of getting that light back there. Oh boy, oh boy. Let's get this light back there. 
Here. Yeah, there we are. Now, up here somewhere, there's a linkage for that, where the, uh, where the shaft comes through from the front. And it's above, like that, right there, you can see, up there you can see the uh, drive shaft thing. But it, it's above that. Now, I don't know how this thing, well, I'll read the book and see if I can, like I have to take the axles off and then pull that thing here, back here off, and then see if it will pull back and there's transmission mounts there of some sort. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I don't know, but I'll figure it out. That seems to be the torsion bar thing there for the suspension. Anyway, that's maybe coming up here. Maybe. We'll just see what have to what I have to take apart to get at it. Anyway, the uh, I'm hoping that just putting the motor on right, like putting the motor mounts on, maybe help the uh, shift linkage a bit. It likely will. So. Anyhow, I'll get the uh, exhaust pipe put on here. Then I want to get it started again and uh, and just see how it sits with the uh, oh, what do you call that? With the proper mounts on the motor. Okay, I'll get, catch you up as I go. Yeah, there now. That's on up there, and I put that gasket goop around the gasket. Then I put anti seize on those nuts to hopefully uh, keep them from seizing, but. You know, it's a lot of heat cycles that happen there. And this thing here is the uh, goes to the intake manifold. I think it takes hot air and does something. Anyway, that's later. I'll get that on right now. As soon as I figure out how to get it on the right spot. Because this thing here, like I might have it on the wrong spot there. I'll just see. I might have to turn that around so it pushes that way a bit more. We'll just see. Okay. Yeah, so that pipe goes on there. And I put some anti seize on that, whether it'll help or not in the future. That thing there is up right now. Correct? Correct? And over here, see how that's... I think this is supposed to be over and tied on to that right there. But, oops, well, I'm looking at me. No, oh, look the other way. There, that's supposed to be over and tied onto this somehow or other. But, uh, oops, I'll put a tie wrap on it there just to hold it from rattling. I'm not really sure. That used to be like I'm, hmm, I don't know. Not on the other side, but maybe it is on the other side. It should be. Anyway, that's where it is now, so, so I'm going to just tie wrap it there, and that, that's where it's been for quite a while, anyhow. Yeah, yeah, there. Left the camera running, I don't know how long. But now, down on the ground, I got everything underneath there put back on. i got to start it up, and look at, look at all this room. My, oh my, I don't know what to do with all that room. Like, I can get, change spark plugs now without cutting my hand off. That's so cool. Anyway... I'll start it up and I'll see how this reacts. I'll show you as I get along. Yeah, that started right up. Now, I don't know what that started at. I should have put the camera up there, eh? Lately, a little bit high. I was going to let that down a bit because, well, we'll see what happens when it gets up to a high temperature. Now, all that stuff is burning off the exhaust pipe that I built on there. So it'll be uh, smoky there for a bit. But look at that. That's, uh, the motor is happy to be sitting right. Thing warms right up okay. So I think I should knock that down a bit because it doesn't get any higher than 3.2 on here. Now I might have to, I might put a shim in there just to see if I can get it to be more, a little bit right. But I'll only put a very small shim in it. Now I'm going to let it run for a while and let it burn off that stuff off there exhaust pipe 
Yeah, it comes right up to temperature pretty quick. This should be at 3.4, but I think it'll only get to 3.2 and hang there. We'll see. See what happens. Maybe it'll be happier now. Who knows, eh? But it only takes about a minute or two for it to come up. And that's the right way it's supposed to work. Anyway, watch that paint dry. Yeah, they're steady as a rock at 3.2. So, I might just put a shim in there. Hmm. And then set the lower and see if I can get it to be... See, see if I can work right for me. But I'm just going to... I won't put a big shim in. I'll just put... Like I've got another one of these. See that little... Oh, no, that's not it. That's not it. That's not it. Oh yeah, there. See that little... I've got another one of these metal things here. And if I use a bit of that metal, I've got a couple of them around. So I use a bit of that metal, it's very thin. I'll, I'll measure it and see. The other thing going on, it's actually running very nicely though. So I hate to screw with it when it runs so good. The other thing going on is the, uh, the gear shifts. I can only get, I can get reverse, which pushes that way. I can get second gear, which pushes that way. I can get fourth gear, which pushes that way. I can't get first, third, and fifth because it pulls this way and it doesn't seem to connect. So there's something loose in the linkage back here. And I guess I gotta dig into that and find out what it is. That might be another whole can of worms, eh? Anyway, that's coming up. Yeah, there I've got these little things that lock washer, they're aluminum lock washer things. If I flatten it out, it's 0.5 of a millimeter. One that size, one this size. I'll just see if I can get one of these things to fit in there and see what happens. Yeah, there I've got that jammed in there now. And then the spring, which is, where is it? Right here. The spring sits right on top of it. So maybe that'll make a bit of difference. If it does, at the worst, I'll just take it apart and put it back the way it was, right? There you go. Yeah, I can't leave well enough alone, can I? Hey, see what happens here. Okay, now, let me see, I'm going to shut you off here. I want to move that up to 1.8 on the low side. I haven't got any heat on this thing yet. There, I think I've achieved my goal. I've got that up to 3. Point, just about 3.8. I can knock that down a little bit using my adjustment. And uh, then the bottom end should be okay too, because the bottom end when I hit the bottom end running, it was a little bit high. I put it up high because I wanted this to pull up more, but maybe I've got it so it works now. I'll have to wait and see. Yeah, okay, now I went and I tapped this down so that dropped the fuel pressure. And then I adjusted it back up so it's at 3.5, just about 3.6. So that's uh, between 3.4 and 3.8. That's good enough for me right now. I'll let it run for a little while, see if it holds steady. Now that's with a half millimeter shim on the back side of the spring and that seems to have just given it enough. So the spring must have just be a little bit, you know, wore over the 100 years or 40 years. But I think that now I'll have to wait and see if I can check it again when it's uh, absolutely cold and see what the starting like see what it starts like when it's cold but for now that's pretty good oh there that's why it was running fast this thing here is pulled out hang on yeah it's been going and running for about a half hour now and it's steady like a rock right there it's just below 3.8 for the last 20 minutes so i'm gonna be happy with that 
let's see what the temperature is on the on the thing. 44 degrees. Yeah, 45, 44 degrees. Temperature of the water is 62 there, 63 there, 58 on the uh, output pump. So that's all okay. And 53 in the uh, radiator. So things are. Uh, Things look pretty good. So I guess I got to be happy with that, eh? I'm going to leave that on. I'll leave the uh, measurement device on there until it completely cools off and I can uh, start it up again with uh, cold start and see what the pressure is at the cold start. You'll have to watch that for me. Okay, that's all for that one. Five minutes into the leak down test and it's uh completely failed that test but oh well i'm not too worried about that i don't i can't say that i understand where it's leaking from but something is not sealed maybe it's on the uh fuel pump it could be that oh what do you call that the one-way valve on the fuel pump could be anywhere hey eh? <laughs> who knows anyhow but likely it's somewhere in the system on the return line and that that's the only thing that would hook up to the return line oh there's a return line in there could be in there like could be this valve here that's leaking back a bit a little o-ring on the end of that maybe i should change that o-ring hmm or it could be just dirty in there and it could be something that I'll never ever be able to find and track down so I'll think about it for a while that's the one spot right in back of that there's a little o-ring the other spot is in here but I think this is pretty near cured the way that it's working when it's running but who knows eh? yeah so here take this thing down right it says put it in fifth gear did that well it won't go into fifth gear but I put it the lever towards fifth gear now, it says to remove the exhaust from the catalytic converter back, which is no trouble, I'll do that. Then it says to take the wiring off the top, which is where the, uh, the reverse light switch is. I can do that. Then it says remove the rear... I, I think they're talking about this thing here, like that, and that, and that. I'll just read it in the book like they don't have any pictures eh? remove the rear the reinforcement strut at the rear suspension tube to facilitate work procedures the reinforcement strut at the rear suspension tube is that this thing here reinforcement strut at the rear suspension tube That doesn't, well, I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. At the rear suspension tube. Hmm. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. The reinforcement strut. Like that's the torsion bar there. I don't want to be removing that. Hmm. It must be this thing here, right? Which I imagine I can move that out of the way. One, two, three, three bolts hold it on. Plus these over here. But I have to get the exhaust out of the way anyhow. Anyway, oh, sometimes it's a... Uh, challenge to know what they're talking about while this rear ends out of it I'm going to replace that fuel line that goes up there the return line this thing here I think is past its due date so I'll put a new line on there anyway that's later I think that's the reinforcement tube 
I don't know. Anyhow, it's off. And along with all the exhaust from the catalytic converter back, it's off. So it's all pretty open here now. You can see up there maybe. Maybe I'll get a light and see if I can see anything up there. Or if you can see anything up there. And then if you can see, maybe we can do something. Okay. Can you see anything up there? I can't see much up there. Somewhere up there is the uh, gear shift connector, which is all, really all I really want, I'm worried about on this. But it seems I have to take the whole transmission out to get it. Okay. Anyway, on to the next step. Anyway, that's as far as I get to today. Like I just back in here. Wait till I get a light. I'll show you where. I don't know how they hook this transmission on here. Hmm. And it doesn't explain anything in the book very well. Maybe I'm just dumb. Like they say to remove that tube at the back here, which I did. Well, I don't know if I did the right thing or not. And then they say to remove a rubber cover at the front of the transmission. I can't even get my fingers in there. How do you remove that without taking? So maybe I'll see if I can drop the transmission a bit so that I can get at it. And then there's two bolts that I can see. I think there's just two bolts at the front there holding that um, tube together. Maybe that has to come apart. But I'll see if I can find online something that will explain it a little bit. Because I certainly I'm not that smart, I guess. Anyway, need to do more more research. I know for sure, I know for sure this comes off and this comes off and just swing them out of the way. So I'll do that. Well, but that'll be tomorrow because enough for today. See you then. Yeah, yeah. So, well, here I am back again on the 924. Now I've done some thinking and done some searching and didn't, didn't get any answers. This thing here didn't have to take it off, but it's off and out of the way anyhow. The, uh, they talk about a reinforcement strut, and I think it's this thing right here, which is at the front of the, this is the uh, torsion bar, and they say remove this reinforcement strut here by the torsion bar and get it out of the way so you can work on this stuff. Now, whether that does help or not, we don't know for sure, but we'll get it out of the way and see what happens. Right at the front, where this is where the transmission and the drive shaft come together, right here, this thing. <laughs> I wish I could see, wish, wish I had a better light. Wish I had, oh, got a lot of wishing. Anyhow right here this thing and it goes there's two bolts one two here one two here now that's as near as I can figure what they're talking about I've got the trans the uh, exhaust system removed from the catalytic converter back and then if I need to I can take the rest out and then move that remove this uh, shield if I have to but I don't think I have to get there they say to put it into fifth gear and then turn the rear motor, turn the motor so you can get it around to where the linkage comes in. But I can't get fifth gear to go in, so I'll just turn the motor and that should ch change. Well, we'll just see what happens. Anyway, I'll, uh, it's what they call a snail shell transmission because it looks like a snail shell back here. And There's these two bolts right there, that, that mount there, and that mount right there on each side. Now, I'll back out a bit so you can see. So here's the whole thing right there, right? Oh. <coughs> Excuse me. Then, it seems that there's four bolts at the front that hold one, one two. I can't see the other two, but it says you have to drop 
the transmission down a bit to get access to the top too. Anyway, but and this is all so I can get to the access to the uh, like they say that to take off the rubber cover at the front. I can't even get my hand in there. So anyway, I'll see. Maybe I can get my hand in there after I remove this thing here. We'll just see. Oh, okay. Well, um, keep on trying. This is a Type Z transmission, which is uh, in 1979 only, and no literature anywhere on it. So, if you have a Type Z, this is the only answer, right? <laughs> in the uh, well, there is literature because in the Haynes manual, they do talk about five-speed removal of this Type Z 16Z. And the shift pattern is like this. Reverse one, two, three, four, five. And that's what I have. And then the instructions are here, but they're a little bit, you know, same old thing. It's tough to follow. But I'll just keep on going along. I'll show you what I do. Now I think that's the reinforcement strut, but who knows, eh? Who knows? Anyhow, next it says to Remove the reinforcement strut and get remove the rubber cap from the front of the transmission cover immediately ahead of the torsion bar tube. Position the clamping bolt on the immediately ahead of the torsion bar tube. Let's see if I can find Yeah, yeah, so there may have one day been a rubber cover here. Wait till I sorry, wait till I get myself sorted out here with a light and everything so you can see. Can't, I can't see, so you certainly can't see. Right up here. Like there might have been a rubber cover on that one, one, one day, or there might have been a rubber cover on this part right here, right there, one day, but it's not there now. And inside there, I don't know. Like, hmm, wait till I get things better here. Yeah, nobody mentions this emergency brake cable in the way here. I got that pulled sort of out of the way, but right up inside there. Uh, can you see that? There's a bolt up there on the drive shaft that you have to loosen now. Isn't that something? How do I get there? It says it needs an extremely long <laughs> Allen key thing, right? Ah, well, socket type. It says here, position the, remove the rubber cap from the front of the transmission cover. Now, hmm, no rubber cap. Maybe ahead of the torsion bar too. Position the clamping bolt on the drive shaft by turning one of the rear wheels, and it couldn't do that. Bolt, the bolt is of the socket head type and requires an extra long socket wrench extension to loosen. Remove the bolt and keep the transmission engaged in fifth gear. Okay, see if I can get the bolt out. Yeah, so that bolt's been in there for a while jostling around now <laughs> that was a lot of work to get that out of there so much for the rubber cover the rubber cover used to be on right there I think right hi hey 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 right there uh, you can't see anything because the way the shadow goes anyway that's what connects the drive shaft so the drive shaft will come free now now, next is, uh, well, read what's next in the instructions. Detach the axle shaft, okay. Remove the bolt, keep the transmission in fifth gear. Detach the axle shaft and suspend them with a wire or a string in a horizontal position, okay. Okay, I'll take the, I'll read chapter 10. Yeah, now here, this, uh, I'm on to, removing the axles, right? So these wrenches here, these uh, bolts here, they're a Torx M8 Torx end on them. And make sure that you get this the Torx thing pushed in all the way because if you strip them, it's trouble. Anyhow, that side here, I've loosened all six of them. I'm gonna pull that off and put a baggie over this of some sort, I'll find a baggie. And uh, then I'll do the same on that side over there. Yeah, there, that side's baggied. Now, I just uh, left all the nuts and bolts, all the bolts still attached to the, 
to the thing so it should be able to just slide right back up into place now I've got a wire holding it up here so it's not putting pressure on the bearing here I don't think that is a real big deal but that's what the book says so why, why would you have a book if you don't want to read it don't want to listen to it now this side here same same uh, routine and we'll see what happens next yeah there we go that's two sides off and next I'll got to read the book some more and see what see what I have to do next yeah now next is the um, transmission mounts there's one right on this side so it's to remove this bolt from underneath there and then take that bolt out raise the transmission a bit and pull this out of the way so I'll do that on both sides I've done the bottom bolt already you can't really see that because there's no light but take out that bolt and then this rubber mount will come off of there and I'll put a jack underneath here at the same time which I've got to prepare yeah there's transmission mounts out of it so instructions say you just lift it up a bit with my transmission hoist right and then oh I can't see from this side maybe we'll see from the other side yeah there and so that's where it used to be right here and you just the bolt into the side of the transmission so now there's just the front front bolts holding the transmission in there now i hope we'll see hang on yeah so the instructions tell you to remove these two bolts which are right there and there on the front right now i've got the bolt from in there already removed then but it's got a like it's an allen key at the other at the back end and you have to just hold your nose right and hopefully get it done because you got to reach at it from up in here to get there anyhow that's they're off so I guess you can do it I don't know how I'm gonna get them back on but they're off now yeah so I've got the two out of the back then it says to push the transmission over that way that's as far as you can get it then it says to remove the conical bolt which I hope is that one right there can you see that that I'm putting my finger at I can't see any other bolt in there and then you can pull the transmission selector gear selector out we hope then you can see an allen key bolt up there and another one on the other side that we have to get out around this brake line I guess the brake line we can get that out of the way my oh my oh my oh I'll, I'll just keep on trying yeah there's that what they call a conical bolt out of it now I wonder if that's looks like it's a bit bent hey well I'll just see about that yeah and as usual with this car I'm not the first guy who's been here with this like that somebody's been chopping at that before hey I'll see if I can get that off of there and then that's some sort of an inspection plate there we'll see what's underneath there yeah so somebody else chopped a hole in it there to get at that gear linkage thing <laughs> and then just repaired it with uh, gasket goop in two places they got I guess they cut the wrong spot up there first then they cut the right spot down there so what I think I'll do is I think I'll clean that up a bit cut out all that stuff and uh, I'll put it back together I'll use that same place to do my repair work and then we'll uh, fix it properly afterwards there I got that undone there and that took a lot of doing or undoing and then now everything here should be ready for it to pull back out of there famous last words as usual and all I want to do is fix that linkage thing and I can feel that it's all just really wob wobbly now this should just slide back maybe lift up a bit and slide back I'll just give it a little slide and see what happens yeah there it is used to be there now as far as I know there's nothing wrong with that transmission 
so that's as far as I know anyhow so I'm gonna just fix it's the linkage that I have a problem with let's see if I can fix that up and uh, get it back together yeah, here's where that thing fits in there as far as I know there's nothing wrong with it anyhow I'll lift the car up a bit more and then I'll have a look underneath here hang on yeah so here's the linkage problems this thing here is there's supposed to be some bushings in here I presume and this this thing here is supposed to be hooked onto something too there's a little ball back there to hook it onto now might have to take the whole thing out hmm the whole tunnel out of there and if I do that I might as well change the clutch but we'll just first off I'll uh, see what I can do about finding out any information on that. No information on the whole thing. Like in here's somebody cut a hole in here, eh? <laughs> boy, oh boy, oh boy. Why would they do that? But I guess they did it so they could get to this. But I don't think they ever got it apart and fixed it. I think they just uh, gave up on it. Hmm. Anyway, kind of see about that. Yeah, but that's enough for today. And we got the transmission out. Yay. And this, like everything in here, I think is fine because I've driven it in all the gears. And then I think this uh, thing here popped off and that made it so it would only get the uh, gears that you push forward for, which would be, I don't know, anyhow. Anyway, I'll uh, tackle it again tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday, anyhow, so hmm, we'll see what, going, see what happens. Hello, and uh, I'm back again, Friday now, today, on the Porsche. Now today, I'm going to, uh, I got the transmission out of it yesterday. Here's the, uh, this is where the gear shift le linkage goes on. Now, there's nothing wrong with all that. I'll take it out and I'll put the power washer on it. Hopefully, it's warm enough. I'll put the power washer on it and clean it off, clean it up, and... Uh, then we'll see about getting it back in sometime soon. But first, I have to fix all that linkage up, which is, I'll, I'll put the car up and I'll show you what's, what's going on underneath there. It's like everything else. Now, I showed you a bit of uh, yesterday that someone before me had cut that hole out of there and then just patched it with... Uh, silicone right but I'll clean that all up and I'm gonna make an inspection cover to go over that and I'll just put it in with self tappers that way I'll uh, be able to take it off and put it back on and, and seal it up well same with that right there I'll put another little inspection plate just on top of that and put self tappers on it to hold it because I don't want to be welding in that stuff there I just uh, hmm don't want to weld it anyhow Without that inspection plate on there, this project, this job here, may well have been just about impossible. Because you just can't, there's no room. When the car is in the factory, they, uh, now 1979 is the only year that had this particular transmission in the 924 Porsche. Don't you know, I've got one, right? And there's very, like, there's very few of them around, and apparently they're pretty good transmissions the racing guys like them and everything like that because it's got the the pattern that uh, gives you like first is the first is down here second and third are there and the second and third you use a lot and fourth is up here so second and third second and third second and third for racing and so the racing guys like it and uh, You know, I guess it's a pretty good transmission if you get right down to it, but the uh, linkage on the ones that aren't like this uh, is back here somewhere where you can reach it, and it takes a different, it takes, like I, I bought, I bought what I thought was the right, right linkage thing, it takes one of these things here to uh, fix it, but this isn't. This won't fix it so I'll have to do something on the printer I'll show you when I get underneath there yeah now here I am so the uh, underneath here this is where the 
transmission. This is the gear shifter linkage here, right? This thing, and then this thing here, hmm, that is supposed to be on a ball joint right up here. I can just barely feel it. And it's supposed to be fairly tight there. And it is adjustable. I <laughs> don't know how you ever adjust it, but it is adjustable. Anyway, what I might have to do is uh, drop this whole thing down. I'll see, like, I'm pretty sure this, like, there's a little bar that goes through the middle of this. Can you see that? I'm pretty sure that's pressed in. And then it, the couple of bushings can go in from the back side. Now, I can make those bushings on my 3D printer and see if I can get them in, in there and then press that piece of steel back in there. We'll just see what I can come up with here. Now, in the meantime, whoops, where's my light? I'll get a light because it might take more. There's more taken apart to come. Hang on, here's a light. So I went and very happily put this exhaust system back up into place the other day, yesterday or the day before. Now there's where the pipe, where the tube hits on this side. So if I get that far, should I just take the clutch out and put a new clutch in? Hmm, I don't know. That's more than I really wanted to do. Hmm. But then again, someday I'll have to put a new clutch in it. But I don't think it'll be today. So I might have to take that whole tube down and that's not too tough to do. I'll take that, I have to remove all the exhaust again, which I'm getting good at. And then this supporting stuff here and then the tube should come down. And then I can get the gear shift linkage stuff out. So that'll be likely what I do today. Where am I pointing? Sorry. Pointing the wrong way. So anyhow, the uh, tube, well, I'll cut out this bit, that bit, but the tube is uh, got to come down off of here. It hooks on to this end right there. So that should all come apart. And then I can get at the gear linkage stuff, take it out, see if I can fix it. Anyhow, there we go. That's coming up today. Well, well, that's... I just unhooked this from the uh, drive shaft thing, or from the gear shift thing, and don't you know it came right out. So I'll see if I can get this apart. If I can get this apart, then I'll think about the other shaft in there and fix it. Okay. Yeah, now I wonder if I'll be able to get this back into the into there, but this all came apart pretty easily. The uh, little press did the job and I just pressed it pressed this center piece out it's got a little bit of a bulge on the center there so it presses in and holds tight in there now I'll clean that all up I'll put these into the uh, parts cleaner here the carburetor cleaner and make make on there make turn them into a carburetor right one piece I'll put this in there too with the what the hell, eh? Then I'll clean off that pole and uh, this thing here can start. It'll make noise now. Makes an awful noise. So I'll clean this up and then I'll see if I can get that other pole out of here. Hmm. Yeah, here's this uh, other part out. Now this is, goes over a little. They won't be able to see anything. Here, but we'll see what you can see. See what you can see. Yeah, you see that little ball? There's a little ball. Maybe you can see it. There's a little ball in there. And that fits onto it. And it looks like there's a screw hole in the top of that. It feels like there's a screw hole or something in the top of that. So it looks like I thought I was going to get away lucky and not have to take out the uh, central shaft. But I do have to take out the central shaft. Again, so that'll be what I do. Now I have just uh, unhooked this from up on top. The uh, hmm, what do I 
if I say that. Maybe when the bushing going here, that would be the case too. We'll see. Now that adjustment, I'm not going to screw with that adjustment there. I'll clean it up and paint it and then I'll pull that central tube out. Yeah, there. I got the uh, $5 overhaul. Now I'll just leave them there. Here's the piece that's out of the cleaning thing. And wait a minute until I get my camera out here. Okay, here we are, right? Can you see that? Yeah. Then this piece goes through here and through that shaft, right? So right through the middle of that. And then I've got to build some bushings to go on the outside. So they go, the bushing will be pushed, go in there and pushed in that way. So I'll see what I can come up with on the uh, magic printer there. So the rest of the day might be inside doing that. Yeah, there's what it looks like on the screen. Now, that was after going through, like this is on one of those 3D programs. Oh, what do you call it? It's called uh, Onshape. So I did a bunch of fighting with Onshape and it seemed to work. But we'll just see how it comes out on the printer. So I've sent it, I'm in the house, right? I've sent it to the printer. And it's just starting to print. We'll give you an update as we get along here. Yeah, there it is. And it uh, fits like a glove everywhere except for this. So I'm reprinting it with just a little bit more room for this to go in. I could push it in, press it in, but here I'll show you what it fits like. It actually fits. I'm, I'm impressed with myself. Right? How do you do this stuff? So this part here, like the way that half circle works, it has to go in like that. And then just slides right in there. Like that. Very tight. Then the center bit goes down here and makes a tight fit. Where am I looking? And this axle goes through here. But I've got too tight there, so I'm just printing it out with a little bit wider. So it'll I can press it in alright. And that should be okay. Yeah, there it's printing away. There's, uh, it like says down here, be 21 minutes. Then you can sort of peel off the layers. Like there's a perimeter, you peel off the layers just to make sure that everything is going to be okay. Like the internal infill is mostly what I'm worried about. Top infill, I don't care. Bridge infill, I don't care. Custom, that's that little piece. So there's the internal infill there. And that gets it all, I've got it set to... 80% for our internal infill on the thing. Now to make it so that it's solid. Yeah, there you go. Those are the bushings are printed. I'll go out and see if I can get it installed on the, uh, on, the on the shaft. And if it fits for that, that's good. Meanwhile, I was printing up these little uh, bushings for the front end of it that I've printed up or designed and they're still cooking they don't these take about 20 minutes to print these take about two minutes to print now here's uh try number one i made these too wide right here so you couldn't fit in you could get one in but you couldn't get the other one in anyway that's good yeah so here's the final version of the uh front bushing now this one here, this edge here was just a bit too wide on there. So I have just narrowed it down a little bit. And hopefully that all works. It seems to fit otherwise. So I'll go and test things out. Yeah, there's that the, uh, new bushing for the front here. A little bit, like it's not very strong at the edge there, but there's room to be able to get the uh, clippy thing in there. So that's good. And I've got the old one over there, so, well, hmm, too many stuff in my hands, eh? I'll print up a couple more of those things, but I'll use the old ones, which are, ah, uh, pointing the wrong way. See, the old ones got this little bit of a gappy thing on them. I've got two good old ones, and I'll print up two good, two good new ones, 
and that'll be okay. Now, see if this thing goes on there. Yeah, there you go. This is 16.3, and that gap is uh, smaller than that. So, back to the old drawing board. Yeah, back with version number umpteen. Will it fit? Yes, it does. A little bit of spit. Yeah, it's all right. Now, I'll see if I can get that thing to be pressed on there like that. That'll make a big difference in the uh, way the gear shift works, anyhow. We hope. Anyhow, I'll press it on with a little press there and see how it looks. Yeah, yeah, fits like a glove there. So mostly it's backwards and forwards motion that it's got to get. Do I have it on backwards? Yep, I have it on backwards. Oh dear, I guess I got to take it out again and put it on right. <laughs> boy, oh boy, I like doing things three or four times. Yeah, there, got it on. It's got to have the bolt on this side. That's going, that's the way it sits in the car is like that, with that up and the bolt to this side here so that I can reach it when I want to put it back together. And it looks like that's all, all good. This part here, this goes on the shaft. Don't know what that hole there is for. But maybe I'll see if I can clean it out a bit. I think it, no, it's just a blank hole. It's empty. Nothing, there's no no see-through on it. Okay, anyway, there you go. That's uh, pretty well done. And I've got the bushings figured out for that thing there. So that's good. Now, that's uh, the Friday afternoon. Don't you know, it's time to uh, put on another video. I did do one earlier this week that you uh, maybe noticed, but maybe not. Anyhow, so this one here, is all about the uh, transmission linkage. Now the transmission is, I had to get the transmission out to get the linkage out because that's the uh, way it works with this car. Now the, it's a type Z transmission and it has difference in the gear shift, way the gears shift and also where the uh, shift mechanism comes from the front of the car and hits in there. Lots of the other cars have a different kind of mechanism that you can adjust or you can put a new piece in for adjusting it. This one here you got to take the transmission out and I made some made those bushings right. So there is a there was a little bit on the uh, I did finally sort of figure out the WUR I got it to my satisfaction but mostly it was all about the uh, getting the transmission up now next week I'll take down the center like that drive shaft part I'll take that down get these shafts back on in the right spot and put it all back up together but that's I think I did all right this week getting that thing off and made so I'm happy with that I'll see you next time bye for now yeah, yeah, 14th of March. And is that guy in the picture there somewhere? There's a squirrel there somewhere. Maybe on that branch, eh? Anyway. Can't see it with the. Uh... Anyway, here I am. Pretty close to the beach, and some of the snow is disappearing. Yay! But still, the path is got quite a bit of snow on it. The squirrel doesn't like the doggy. Well, they don't like each other. We'll see how things are at the beach today. Oops. Oh, look at that. The snow's disappeared on this little bit. And all the ice has gone away. It was here the other day. 
blew away the other way. Ponds are still frozen. But slowly the snow is receding. And that ice berm that was on the beach here seems to be fairly well gone. Had a couple of pretty good tides here the last few days. Right up to here the tide came. So we're back to having a beach. A couple of little ice cakes. Yeah, very important stuff happening on the beach here for the doggy. Anyway. There you go, another another day at Holland Cove. <laughs>